Good morning, everyone. Good. Again, my name is Yin Xiong. I'm chief architect of cloud platform at Huawei. It's great to be here at OSCon. OSCon. I personally attend this conference a couple of times. It's a great conference for the software developers and for technology leaders. So today, I want to share with you some information about open source in China. And um, I want to talk about how important and powerful the open source is to the uh, IT industry in China. I will also talk a little bit about uh, Huawei ourselves, the role we play in the whole open source community, the whole open source ecosystems. But let's start with things to do. And if, if you go to China, let's say, next week, so just go to any place that you have a list of things you want to check out, right? Now, for China, I guess, is you probably try those things, check out those things. Panda. Somewhere to say a panda. They're really adorable, right? Yeah. Or if you find a place to have a cup of tea, if you like the tea, especially you go to a city like Hangzhou where they have really have a famous tea over there. Or you just see the crowd city and experience the culture there. When I say crowded, it's really a crowded city over there. So there's a lot of things to do in China. But today, I want you to check out the software industry in China. According to a survey by an organization called China Academy of Telecommunication Research, and that survey estimated the total software revenue in China will reach 1.2 trillion in the year 2020, up from 700 billion in last year. 1.2 trillion, this is a lot, it's a big number for me. And more importantly is that 13% of year over year growth rate over the next four years. In fact, it's next three years. You know, 2016 is already gone, right? So the China software industry is booming, and it's good news for software developers, and it's good news for you and for us, too. So how open source software is doing in China? It's great. It's huge. So the same survey also estimate, reports the open source software usage for last year, and this is the number that came out. As you can see, easily that more than 90% of the customers in the survey say they are currently either use the open source software or plan to use an open source software. Not more than 90%. This is an incredible number. You know, when I first look at number, myself was surprised. How can more than 90%, but it's real. This shows that how much the software developers in China love open source technology. It's a huge trend right now in China for the open source technology, and it's great news for all of us. Now, part of the reason that uh, for this huge open source market can be attributed to some many open source organizations in China, like CSD and China, uh, open source China.net. They promote open technologies. They promote the communi communi uh, community collaborations. They promote the ecosystems globally. Again, the open source market is booming and is, uh, is, uh, is huge in, uh, trends in China right now. Not surprisingly, there's no surprise here. The company in China, just like company here in the U.S., the company chooses the software open source technology based on the technology maturities, sustainabilities, and the talent pool. Those are top three uh, factors for companies to choose which open source technology, which open source software to use. And in some cases, especially for large uh, companies, the talent pool is the number one factor when they choose open source technology. What that means? That means that you, also of you, are the reasons that for many companies choose the uh, open source technology. This is awesome. This is great. Now, another incredible number is shown in this report is how companies implement open source technology. In this report, you can see from those numbers that about 80% of customers, companies that implement this open source technology in production for the business through the partnership with technology providers. This is really good news for the technology providers. There is a gap between the open source version of the product 
and the, product, and the production ready, enterprise ready version of softwares. So the company that need help from us, from all of you, to make the software, to make the technology the more reliable, more scalable, and easy to use. This is where we come into play. And open source is a top priority, top strategy in Huawei. We are members of many uh, open source organizations like Linux Car, OpenStack, uh, CNCF, and OpenNFV, and Spark. So we are the number one in promoting and contributing to the open source technology. And with, I will give a couple of examples in the field next slides. But with open source strategy, we try to focus on two things. One, we try to focus on solve real customer problems in using or adopting the open source technology. Whatever that means, it may mean that we optimize or extend the open source technology. It may mean that we give a training to developers for our customers. It may mean that we make the software easy to use. Right? And the, um, the second we want to focus on is the contribution back to the communities through the project we started or through the project the community started. We contribute both to the communities. So this is OpenStack is one of the scenarios that showing the role we play in the uh, open source community in China. So we help organize the first OpenStack Day events in China. We hosted five box match events and developer trainings in China. But the real story I want to share with you today is one of the customers we have, China Mobile. We help China Mobile deploy the OpenStack uh, deployment for the private cloud, which we believe is the largest uh, OpenStack deployment with four clusters around the country, managing more than 6,000 nodes. And this platform, the China Mobile used for the IoT, for the NFV applications. Now, one of the requirements or one of the uh, problems they're facing is they want to link all these four clusters together to be one logical unit so they can control from the central place to deploy apps across the four clusters. So we did a project called Tricycle that where we uh, federated multiple OpenStack clusters into one logical unit. It exactly solved the problems they have, and this project has been contributing back to OpenStack communities. Another example I want to share with you is the Kubernetes and containers. As I mentioned earlier, that we are one of the founding members for CNCFE, which is the uh, foundation that hosts the Kubernetes project. Our IT, internal IT team is the first of uh, is the one of the first to deploy and manage Kubernetes and containers in production for IT applications with cloud native architectures. They were really those are really Kubernetes container in productions. Our IT guys, they did a really good job to be able to use this technology to re improve the resource utilization a lot. As you can see from this slide, in some cases, they, they reduced the number of VMs from 100 to 20 for the same amount, same amount of workload. They also be able to improve the development efficiency, as you see from the slides, 10 times. At the same time, we're heavily engaged with the Kubernetes project, and then we contribute uh, in the community. We contribute many features to the, uh, to the community, to this project, including Kubernetes federations, uh, resource uh, schedulings, container networking, and so on. We continue to uh, work with communities and contribute to the project a lot. Now, additionally, I also want to share with three projects we, are, we initiated, and we are working with other companies to uh, try to contribute that back to the uh, communities. The uh, first is the carbon data. Carbon data is a, uh, this project has been already accepted as a top level project in the Apache Foundation. It's an index data format for fast data analysis. OpenSDS is a project that abstracts the whole uh, storage resource as a logical pool so that developers can use the standard API to schedule the storage resource for their application needs, just like they schedule computing resource for their applications. Microservice framework is a framework that we, use, we build as part of a platform, past platform, while in the process to open source this project and hopefully they can feel back to the communities. The last but not least, I want to mention a project called OpenLab. The OpenLab is a dev cloud environment where developers, you can sign up and go there to develop a test and run your applications based on the open API, based on the open 
uh, based on the open source technologies. This is really a unique way that we contribute to the community by open up this open open labs, which already have certain of them, six more in the build. And um, again, you, there's a button there in this uh, URL. You can go to the try. It's the way that we help promote the developer ecosystems, help to uh, improve the developer experience through tools, through API again. I think that's all for me. Now, one last word, and I like this word, is working together is fun, but winning together is awesome. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed the conference.